Hi, it's Christine from the European Startup Association and I'm here with Pavel and um, he is one of our valued members. He, um, he participated in Pitching Match and he made great progress with his company. But uh, I'll let him introduce himself. So please tell us a bit more about you and your company. Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Pavel. Uh, I represent uh, Dynamic Air Cooling. Uh, this is uh, a new cooling technology. We develop it currently in Poland, but uh, we'll be happy to cooperate with anyone who is interested in uh, green and effective cooling systems. Thank you, perfect. And tell us a bit why you started this company. Oh boy, I don't know answer for this question. <laughs> uh, well, uh, it started with an idea. Uh, like as always, uh, I've just uh, I've been extremely lucky in meeting some uh, very interesting people, and uh, I've met Alexander, who is uh, also a co-founder of our company, and we started uh, debating on different uh, green technologies, different. Uh, things that basically can shape the world. And one of the technologies he was working on based on the time was related to dynamics of gases and theory of uh, thermal dynamics and things like this, very complicated stuff. Uh, but uh, one of the uh, effects of uh, the work he was doing was uh, uh, achieving extremely low temperatures uh, with basically very little effort and this is what we started to develop and we said uh, like hey why don't we use this for refrigeration uh, and air conditioning and starting from that point and that was in 2015 uh, we've been developing the technology we started with some theoretical uh, work uh, built mathematical models then moved to first prototype and then Currently, right now, we're finally building an industrial prototype, which we can show to people. Yes, amazing, great. Um, what kind of challenges uh, did you come across in this whole journey? Because I can imagine it wasn't easy. Uh, in, no startup journey is easy, but especially with a product like that, I can imagine mm -hmm. uh, there are specific challenges um, that you came across. And um, do you have any tips for people? Uh, I mean, you're in a very specific sector, but maybe there's some learnings that you can share with uh, other startups? Uh, well, absolutely. Like, uh, we probably made uh, a very big mistake from the very beginning because uh, we thought that uh, we know it, all right? So we thought that what uh, easier can be there. Uh, we have the technology, so it uh, will be very easy for us to build uh, uh, some device and then start the business. And as a matter of fact, this is like the biggest mistake you can make. Never assume that you know everything. There are so many things you can learn along the way. And uh, like uh, if you start a startup, be prepared to learn all the time because uh, you never know anything. There are always smarter people out there and it's your job to get uh, those people on board or cooperate with them, not to rival with them. Yes. So that, that is probably like one of the or the largest uh, challenges uh, in of being in startup. Yeah, I think that's a very good point because yes, uh, a lot of times you think like, okay, yeah, I know this, I know my stuff because a lot of people start something uh, with where they have a kind of an expertise or they find a team member who who does, um, but. Like in in every life situation, you can't anticipate everything that's going to happen, yeah, and absolutely. things that don't work, things that do work differently, people react differently. Maybe you need more funding than you thought you need, and um, yes, I can definitely say this as well, also for my journey, um, that I always learn so many new things, um, and you have to be open to this. Because yes, if you think you know it all, then also it's difficult sometimes to, to be flexible enough to change the idea or to um, adjust accordingly to the market or to feedback that you received. Uh, absolutely. And it's not uh, even uh, always about uh, uh, assuming that you know everything. It's also about whether you're able to speak to the people to or to, to your people to people you talk with uh, in the language that they understand so we uh, come from a science background so the mistakes we were also making at the beginning that we were too technical 
right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I still see like even five years ago, right now we stopped that, okay? So we try to keep it as simple as possible so that uh, the moment we mention something, it can be understood by everyone. But uh, just right now we finished an acceleration program in Poland and uh, there were a couple of startups with us and for half a year, I'm not able to understand what is their product and what uh, they actually do, or what is the business uh, they are in. Because uh, the presentation is like overcomplicated, and the idea they try to converse is sometimes uh, uh, clutched in too many other uh, ideas or, or questions they try to raise during a very short period of time. So try to keep it simple. Uh, this is like also uh, a very helpful advice. Uh, which we are the very helpful thing, a very helpful thing we learned uh, along the way. Yes, very, very nice uh, point because, uh, again, <laughs> there's not only the different languages because you have different backgrounds, but then there's language uh, that changes between uh, public institutions, startups, uh, investors, companies. Everyone says the same things, but using different terminologies, doing, using different language, even if it's all English or all the Polish or all German or all Italian, whatever. But um, this is also one of the challenges we actually face with the European Startup Association. And this is why we want to bring the different people also together and to understand each other. Uh, and I, you participated in the roundtable discussion and uh, we started now uh, writing everything down from uh, all the people who sent us stuff. And one of the things um, you mentioned in there as well is even just the terminology startup and entrepreneur mm -hmm. um, meld together because people use these terms and these are very hip terms that are used by everyone. But what does it actually mean? And this is uh, just one example, but specifically in different industries, you then have very specific terminology and not everyone understands uh, what you're saying. And it's really, really good advice to say, okay, if you're a very technical person, if you have a scientific background, um, make sure that other people understand actually what you're saying if they don't have this background. Absolutely. Um, and it has nothing to do with dumbing it down or something, but it's just, if you would talk to me in, in the language that uh, you mentioned and use terminology, I probably won't understand everything because I'm just not having this background. And the same is if someone else talks to you about, I don't know, something else that you don't have mm -hmm. a background in using terminology, then yeah. So it's always, always uh, good advice to think about the language and um, make sure that you step out of your zone, language zone, into other people's zone. Yeah, yeah, know your audience, know your audience, yep. and like then find the correct, correct approach. That's, yes, that's, that's important. Yes, okay, perfect. Um, is there anything else? I mean, um, I know that you got the uh, seal of excellence recently as well. Oh, yes. Um, so maybe that's worth mentioning. Is there anything else that you would like to mention? Um, uh, regarding what you're doing, and then we come back to the last question, which basically we already maybe, maybe we do that first sorry mm -hmm. <laughs> question the um, important characteristics for startups so you mentioned n never stop learning and be aware of the language is there anything else specific characteristics that you think are most important when you have your own company oh my where do we begin uh there are there are so many uh, so many things but i think uh one of the uh, most crucial thing is that you have to believe in, in, in what you're doing. Uh, because mm. other than that, it just doesn't make uh, sense to come to establish to yet another company uh, to go for a couple of presentations and then switch to something else. Uh, if you are yeah. trying to do a startup, try to make it uh, worth uh, your while and try to make, uh, try to solve some problem. All right. Um, there are there are so many uh, startups right now, which which uh, I personally see even in this community where we are currently located uh, and uh, present our ideas, and they just repeat uh, one and the same solution from slightly different uh, perspective. Uh, th there are so many money right now spent on useless thing, uh, in my understanding, and there are so many problems which are. <laughs> Uh, untouched, uh, absolutely, and neglected by companies and by startups that uh, um, um, 
I see this as a huge discrepancy. Um, I can understand, like, uh, I understand that there is a market for a robot uh, walking a dog, you know, so, but I don't uh, <laughs> see that this is like a priority in this world right, right now. There are much yeah. more um, urgent uh, needs to be, to be addressed. Uh, so try to make a difference. Try to make a difference and, and believe in that difference uh, that, that you try to make. Um, also, and, and this is one of the things I mentioned uh, back at, uh, at Malmo, uh, be ready to work in a garage. If you're a startup, it's not about co-working spaces or computers you have. Uh, like if you look at all these big companies like Apple, like Hewlett Packard, like uh, half of the companies uh, from Silicon Valley, they all started in garage because uh, uh, that it was not about the place or about facilities they had. It was about the idea and about group of people working together. So you can work in a coffee shop. You don't need uh, a fancy, fancy table and uh, you know, like most powerful computer to to write a presentation. Uh, so probably one of the most uh, important thing uh, for me and. Uh, the question I was struggling with uh, at the very beginning is, know why you're different. Um, uh, once again, um, investors will come to you and very often you'll have uh, like a minute or two to present your idea, idea to them. And the very first question yeah. they will ask you is why I should invest in you and not in the other 20 guys who present something else. Uh, or yeah. maybe similar. Yeah. So you should know from very, very beginning why you are better than everybody else and why you're different. Why should people talk to you and not to everyone else? And uh, yeah. if you know answer to that question, uh, that is half of the presentation you need to make, half of the pitch you need to make to, to, to your investors. Make it clear. Yeah. <laughs> yes, very good. Very good advice, thank you. Is there anything else you would like to tell us about you, the company, Seal of Excellence, or anything uh, else uh, you uh, want uh, to ask people? <laughs> all right, since, uh, since our last uh, meeting, we've actually made uh, quite some progress. Um, I already mentioned that uh, we participate in uh, Polish government acceleration pro program, which is called uh, Poland Price. Uh, we were lucky to secure a third uh, place and to win, to, to win quite a substantial grant uh, for our company. Uh, also, we successfully obtained Seal of Excellence in Horizon 2020 program, and right now we are continuing our journey with them as well. And uh, yes, uh, in general, there is a lot of happening with us in terms of uh, both technical development of uh, our product and also in terms of uh, um, securing, let's say, financing of the company and uh, working with uh, potential partners uh, in the market. Right now, we focus not only on Poland, but we look uh, on European Union as such in general. And uh, our next step will be, of course, uh, transformation of product and moving forward to uh, Asian markets, uh, to Africa, um, and so on. Uh, also, one thing to mention is that we applied for uh, yet another patent, uh, so it's common. And uh, uh, yeah, we're happy to say that our technology is getting more and more bulletproof uh, from day to day. Hey, <laughs> sounds exciting. And uh, we're very, very happy uh, to be part of your startup journey uh, a bit at least and try to help you as much as we can. And to have you on board uh, really, really, really is uh, really exciting because if, when we see that um, our the companies that we work with are so passionate and exciting and make progress as well, then uh, we get very excited for them as well. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I I want to thank you as well because, uh, as I mentioned numerous times, and I will not, uh, uh, and I will keep on mentioning uh, like uh, lots of things uh, were done thanks to to you and to European Startup Association, and we like uh, uh, and we very much appreciate that we can be a part of it. Oh, thank you so much, and thank you for the interview. And we are looking forward to talking to you soon again and also uh, having you at our future event. Oh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, if there are, uh, if uh, out there there are any people who work with uh, uh, air conditioning or with uh, 
uh, automotive industry or are interested in cooperating on such crucial question as refrigeration uh, and air cooling. We'll be happy to share information about our company and see what are the possible ways we can cooperate together. Thank you. Perfect, yes, please, uh, you can all contact either us and we can connect you with uh, Pavel um, or you, you find him online. Um, I can put a link in underneath the video where people can find you as well. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Bye.